Thanks for joining us for today's tutorial. We're going to go through the call history tab from the portal. In today's tutorial, we're going to go through all the different options that are associated here in the call history tab, including filters and searching, setting up what we call scheduled exports. We're also going to go through call examples and I'll show you how to pull SIP flows, which we'll talk about in more detail in another, in another training tutorial, but a lot of very useful information right here in the call history tab. So to access the call history tab, you simply, when you're logged in, all you have to do is press on this call history button right there at the end of the nav bar right at the top. First, we'll look through the filters tab. All you have to do is click on this button and you can filter call history results a number of different ways. You can filter them based on date. You can filter them based on a user, department, location, number, whether it's a caller number or a dial number. And you can also filter them by inbound, outbound, or missed calls. Moving on along, we have our scheduled exports button. This is a great tool because it's going to enable you to set up scheduled exports. This might be useful to you if you're working with third party billing solutions so you can schedule exports to run to them, as well as things like maybe a sales supervisor wants to get a weekly report of all the calls an individual team member or employee was making. So you can set up this report right by here by naming it setting up the periodic basis you want that report to send and where you want it to be sent to. Back on over to the call history. We're going to run through an example of one of the individual calls right through here. So what we'll do is we'll take this call example right through here where we can see this was a call from Massachusetts. As you see built into the call history, we have the CNAM number, the MOS score, which we'll get into in just a little bit here, the phone number that was dialed, who they actually spoke to, the time and date of the call, duration of the call, the release reason will be here in the reseller view as well. In addition, you can also listen to and download the calls right here from the call history. It's all nice and seamlessly integrated. And then also pull those SIP traces, which we go over in more detail in another course. As we go through this, the first thing that I wanted to point out to you is our MOS scores. So the way MOS scoring works is we have analytic servers that run packet captures in our different data centers. And then depending on the device that you're distributing to your clients, a lot of those devices will also report back LAN side data for us as well. Specifically, we'll use Yealink for an example because that is a brand that does include that functionality by default. So what you get with a MOS score, the way the grading system works is it's graded on a scale from 1 to 4.5. 1 is about as bad as it gets. That means that call is essentially um, inaudible. A four, anything 4 and above is considered excellent quality. A 4.5, again, is considered as good as it gets. And what that means is that there's no packet loss and relatively little to no jitter, which is another term for latency as well. So the nice thing about this tool, as you see, I got a 4.2 on the far side, which was one of our users here at Virtue. And the reason why, as you see, I run my mouse over that, I can see that user extension 320 had 1.2% packet loss. So it's still a pretty decent score so that nobody might have noticed that impact to that phone call. But if you ever do have a client complain about poor call quality, all you simply have to do is ask them for that call example, and you'll be able to hover your mouse right over the MOS score of that call and see that, again, that end-to-end -end visibility and what side of the conversation caused that poor call quality. I've seen many an instance where you're able to take this data to the ISP or the internet vendor and have them troubleshoot and fix the issue because, again, you're able to provide that historic data showing that issue exactly when it happened. Pulling SIP traces again, super easy. We do go over this in detail in another course, but for example, I'll just show you, all you have to do is simply click on the magnifying glass there and it's gonna populate this trace for you. Thanks for joining us today for our call history tutorial. Look forward to the next one.